invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I will give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This reading is from Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. This can be found on page 740 of your chair Bibles. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from, from of old, nor will again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at 
at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room. Let the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among nations. Why should it be said among the people, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 20 to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 to verses 5 through 6. It can be found on page 940 of your chair Bibles. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our, with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful peace, uh, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, <coughs> so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. It always strikes me as a little odd on Ash Wednesday that we are faced with a bit of a contradiction. In the portion of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount that we hear today, he makes it clear that we should pray in secret. We should give alms in secret, pray in secret, fast in secret. And God, who sees in secret, will reward us. And yet, here we are on this day when it will be more obvious to others than ever that we have gone to worship. As we greet them with ashen crosses on our heads. Our actions in worship today seem to contradict these words from Jesus. We can take his words to the extreme and say that we shouldn't even ever gather for worship, because what we do here is public. Perhaps we should all grab our coats and purses and anything else and head home to our bedrooms and shut the door and pray there. Taken at face value, it might seem that that is precisely what Jesus would have us do. But we know that there is more to it than that. Jesus doesn't want us to be all about ourselves and our own personal relationship with God, walking this journey of faith alone. We're called to be part of the body of Christ, to be part of a community of faith to gather for worship, to support one another, to share in one another's lives. So why then does he tell us to help others, to pray and to fast, to live out our lives of faith in secret? Often the first thing that I do when I get up in the morning is to open the curtains of our living room and let the sun shine in, or maybe at least a little bit of light if it's a day like today. I love having that light come in the windows, helping me to wake up. However, in our current house, I've had to balance that love of having the light streaming in in the morning with the reality that I am giving up some privacy when I do that. Our living room is at the front of our house, and we live on a house that has lots of foot traffic. So there are regular, regularly people who are walking by who can see right into our house and especially into that living space where we spend most of our time. In fact, just the other day when I went to close the curtains at the end of the day, I was reminded of just how easy it is to see in when our neighbor who happened to be walking by waved to me from the street. <laughs> The very reason I often close the curtains as soon as it gets dark, because I appreciate my privacy when I am at home. So it sometimes feels like letting the light in is also letting the whole world in. And I don't know about you, but I sometimes act a little differently when I know that someone is watching. When I'm alone in my car, especially on long road trips, I might be singing along to a song on the radio like I was performing at the Grammys. But as soon as I get into town and I pull up to that stoplight and notice the person next to me giving me a funny look, I might uh, tamper that dramatic performance down a little bit. On the other hand, there are some days that knowing someone is watching makes me add a little flair to all I do or makes me work a little harder to pick up the pace on a walk, or act a little silly when I notice that a child is peeking at me over the booth of a restaurant. For good or for bad, our behavior and actions are often affected by the presence of others. That presence may give us that extra dose of energy that we need to do our best, or it may take the wind out of our sails and make us less bold. When we come to God, God doesn't want any of that to be in the way. We don't have to be, pretend to be something we are not with God. Whether we think that that pretending is better or worse than who we really are. We can strip away all of the masks we wear and tear down all of those walls we put up and be completely ourselves with God. 
God knows our hearts and wants us to be genuine, unaffected by the watchful eyes of others as we spend time talking with God, helping those in need or engaging in a spiritual practice. It's not about what other people think of us. It's about being in the presence of God with all of our fears and doubts and hopes and dreams exposed. But that doesn't mean that we need to hole up with our curtains pulled shut, closing out the world. It's about being authentic. Whether alone in our room or surrounded by people, Jesus wants our hearts and minds to be focused on him, not worried about what others think. It may be easier to be authentically who we are when no one is watching, but that also is not the life that God intends for as we gathered today, whether you are here in person or joining us online, we came not to impress one another with our faithfulness, but with hearts and minds hungry for words of grace. We are here because we enter into these 40 days of Lent, and we want to focus on the one who gave his life for each of us. This is a time for us to return to God, to repent and refocus our lives on the one who gives us life. That might look different for each one of us individually, but it's also a part of our whole life together as we come together to be forgiven, renewed, and restored. Our transformation and restoration isn't a public show for all to see. It isn't even about what we do in the midst of any of it. It's about what God has done and continues to do in us. God, who knows us better than we know ourselves, draws us back into God's presence, filling us with love and peace and forgiveness and compelling us into action. As we enter into this season of Lent, we turn to God trusting that God will continue to transform our hearts, to help us grow in faith, and to live to share God's love with the world. We are changed by God's love, and we are sent to share that love with the world. Even as we serve, we continue to be changed and transformed. We share God's love, not so that the world can give us a collective pat on the back, because it is who we are and who we are becoming. It's about living into our identity as children of God, becoming the people God has created us to be, opening our hearts to the one who loves us, flaws and sins and all. As we leave worship today with ashes on our foreheads, whether those ashes are or what a cross on our foreheads, whether they are ash or at home if you're using dirt from a potted plant. The signs of the cross on our forehead is not for the benefit of others. It's for us. Later this afternoon, as you might catch a whiff of the scent of the oil that's mixed with the ashes, that same oil that is used to mark us with the sign of the cross in baptism, we're reminded that we are God's children and we are marked with that cross of Christ forever. As we see the ash or dirt on our foreheads in the mirror or find it on our fingertips after wiping our brow, we're reminded that God cleanses us and refines us. We're reminded that this life is only temporary, that we are only dust, but we are dust that is held forever in the love of God. And God has done and continues to do amazing things with dust.
invite you to stand as you are at all. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives. We confess to you. Have, have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have, have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have, have mercy on us, O oh God our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I get to come forward as you wish.
encourage you to stand as you are able. Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world by the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O oh God. Inspire our faith formation ministries and those who teach and lead. Invigorate us with lifelong curiosity and wonder as we grow as your disciples. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, we give thanks for all your faithful ones of every time and place. Renew us by the example of their lives of prayer and service. And at the last, bring us with them into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, 
We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another.
please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. No God's people say Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth. Bless you on this Lenten journey. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve in love. Thanks be to God.